Okay, so once you've been through the uh, the estimating side of things, then uh, we're ready to create the schedule. So we've got some tasks in here. Um, these three don't have anything allocated at the moment. Uh, so just the same as we did in the previous exercise, these have already been allocated from the cost plan. And see that my slab on grid items. So we can also see that in here because they are um, the ones that are allocated to grid out. So I'm just going to allocate these ones by dragging and dropping as before. Okay, and again, just as before, I'm going to allocate which the duration driver is. Okay, and then now to create the locations, I've only got substructure, so I'm not going to create location systems because there's only one. Um, but I go to define locations. So even though I've got the whole building there, uh, I'm only going to work on the uh, substructure at the moment. So we've got again our, uh, now we've got floors in here, and can I isolate them? You can see exactly what's on each floor, and now we want the actual zone. Uh, so this just works in a hierarchical tree. Um, it's pretty much the same process as we did before. Put in floor plan view. <clears throat> and we can change the depth of this view so we can see different parts of the building depending on which trade we're working with. And I'm just going to create some um, simple locations. There. Okay, and then that gives me the list. Again, it's got the other side of the line, so I just need to uh, re reactivate the quantities and then just tidy up the tree. And I'll just name these. So again, I can see exactly what work is going to be carried out in those locations per trade. Uh, so once I'm happy with my location structure, then back to my schedule planner workflow. Okay, it's got all the tasks starting at C first, so let me change those. So we can, uh, when we have all these locations, we can easily create what-if scenarios by changing how the tasks flow through the locations. And so what-if scenarios and working way around the building, and we've got lots and lots of flexibility um, to be able to do that. So as you can see, these are our starting at A, uh, C, I'm going through to A, I'm just going to turn those around. So they're now starting at location A and going through C. Uh, so again, as we default, um, I'm just going to update the resources from what's in the estimate. And again, just to see where I'm more comfortable with looking at the um, that information is now there, 
and now I just need to add some logic, which I'm going to do in this view again. Okay, and I'll do that again as well again. So now we've got the logic. Um, again, it's difficult to really see much in here or any issues or any problems. But I can see in here that the production rates are very, very different. So I'm going to try and balance those. Again, choose that. That will mean that I need three crews. Yes or You obviously spend a lot more time on this, making sure it's absolutely perfect, but um, for the purposes of what we're doing today, I'm going to do it quite simply for you. Um, and then, once we're happy with that, we can establish the 4D. So here I've already got some groups set up, and we just allocate the different tasks to the different groups. Okay, so they're just dragged and dropped from the right hand side to the left. And then we can explore. <clears throat> we can show a legend on this side. Um, just make sure that the rest of all isn't going to show. And we're ready to view. So we get an instant feedback um, on the estimate and we're going to get an instant feedback on the schedule. As soon as we've created the schedule, we can see exact, an exact representation uh, of it in 4D. And if anything is updated, the estimate is updated, so is the schedule, so is the 4D. So any design changes are just uh, automatically done. No waste is ever, uh, sorry, no work is ever actually wasted and has to be redone. 